Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you my WWE Monday Night Raw review for December 1st, 2014. And it was actually on the first day of December. How ironic is that? Um, and this was a pretty solid show. I enjoyed this show. Um, on commentary, we have JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry the Kim Marler. Awesome stuff. And the anonymous Raw general manager buzzes in. Um, I don't like the anonymous Raw general manager that much. He's just... It was annoying to hear him come off that computer. That was probably the worst... One of the worst ideas they came up with, with a, as a GM. It was terrible shit. Um, and he pretty much said that he's going to be like the next person in power or something like that. Um, and then John Cena comes out and says that uh, he didn't get the authority out of power to have the computer start talking for them. And he says that uh, we're going to shake it up. He disconnects the computer. And then Seth Rollins comes out. And actually John Cena said that uh, we're not going to have um, someone be the GM that's never there. And uh, he talks about how... Uh, the Raw general manager is like, the, is like uh, the current WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Brock Lesnar. They both never uh, show up. Uh, they only show up once a year. So Seth Rollins comes out. And he uh, gets upset with John Cena because he's taking credit for uh, pretty much, um, you know, uh, getting the authority out of power. Because uh, what, really, what happened was... Uh, Seth Rollins pinned John Cena's shoulders to the mat. He eliminated John Cena from that match. And he came out too with J&J &J Security, which is Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury. And um, John Cena then says, yeah, because of Big Show. Because Big Show betrayed us. And Seth Rollins says, what's the point of doing this, you know? Uh, what's the point of uh, having... Um, Working your ass off if there's going to be a different person in charge. I mean, who could it be? It could be like somebody like Eric Bischoff or Batista, which he <clears throat> pretty much trashes him saying that if that uh, he was a shitty wrestler and a shitty actor. Um, you know, he said, well, oh, we can get JBL to be the GM of Raw, and the crowd popped for that one, and uh, everyone liked that. And I thought that was good stuff, and uh, he says that the way this can... Uh, all be over is if he brings the authority back. He wants them to bring the authority back to power. Um, and John Cena says that uh, you're sca <clears throat> scared because um, you don't have like the authority to hide behind anymore. Now you're just like everybody else. You can't you can't say or do anything you want. Uh, you're pretty much stuck uh, like everybody else. You have to work your way up to the card. And John Cena tells him to ask nicely. And at first he does. Um, and then he was going to do it again. But then the computer buzzed in. Because uh, John Cena didn't close the laptop all the way. So the internet still worked. And we find out that uh, at TOC. John Cena and Seth Rollins are going to have a match. Um, it will be a tables match. Uh, I'm glad they're using the... Uh, stipulation pay-per-view now uh last year toc was just one match at least now it's the table the chairs the uh toc we haven't gotten the ladder match yet but we, i pretty much know what the ladder match is going to be but now there's a best special stipulation that um if team if john cena loses this match he will lose his number one contendership to the wwe world heavyweight championship which is pretty much obvious that john cena's going to lose and then John Cena gets sh shocked by this, and Seth Rollins attacks him from behind, and Cena's fighting them off. Um, and he's taking out J&J &J security, and then Kane comes out. Um, he still wears the uh, the suit pants, you know, the uh, tuxedo pants. You know, he's still in the same attire, like the corporate Kane attire. I don't know why, but he is. Um, I really wanted to see a different Kane, but I guess that's not going to happen. And he choke slams Cena. And um, then Ryback comes out. And he takes out uh, J and J security and Seth Rollins. And then um, K 
Kane comes in and takes him out with a chair because Ryback and Kane are going to have a chairs match at TLC, which I'm not looking forward to. Um, <clears throat> and then I think, uh, who came out after this? Big Show. Um, it's because Cena was fighting back with people and Big Show knocked out Cena. And um, Eric Rowan came out. And, no, Eric Rowan came out before Big Show and Big Booty Kane and started laying everybody out. And then Big Show came out, fought with Eric Rowan and hit him off the head with the steel steps. Um, and then Dolph Ziggler came out and Big Show went to throw him into the pose, but Ziggler um, put him into the pose and grabbed the ladder. And Eric Rowan, I mean Luke Harper, the Intercontinental Champion, came out and took out. Dolph Ziggler, and then uh, the heels actually stood tall. Um, then Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury did the triple powerbomb that the Shield used to do, which consisted of Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. And Seth Rollins was the one doing the powerbomb, which was awesome to see that. And they powerbomb, triple powerbomb John Cena through the announcers table. Not the, I mean, just the regular table, because Seth Rollins had brought in a table. So I thought this was an awesome opening segment, an awesome ball. It was a uh, it was it was the typical promo segment, but at least it was something different, something unique. And then we got the first match. I don't remember what the first match was though. Uh, it was at Golden Stardust versus Kofi Kinst. It was pretty much a tag team t turmoil match, and the winner would become the number one contenders to the, to the WWE Tag Team Championships. And the way this match works is it's like a gauntlet match except for tag teams. So if uh, you lose um, the match, like if your team loses, you have to go back to the locker room and then the other team stays and keeps fighting until it, everyone's done. Kind of how it is. Um, and we, the first two teams to fight it out is Golden Stardust and Kofi Kinston and Big E. And they had Xavier Woods with, as their manager. Um... What can I put this? So now the New Days debuted. And it was, um... They de ended up debuting on SmackDown. But since I didn't watch SmackDown, I, uh... I, didn't, I pretty much knew nothing about it. Um... <clears throat> I, the face, and I think that sucks, the face. I'd rather have them heal. I think they could... Having them be heal would make more sense. They were talking about how they weren't getting the opportunities. And they weren't getting, like, enough chances and stuff. Um, and when they cut their promo, Xavier Woods was talking about kissing babies and hugging fat girls, so I don't really get why they're face. I knew, I had a feeling they were going to be face just because the promos they were cutting, but, uh, their, fa their face, um, I think it sucks, their face. I'd rather have them heal. But, they seem like they can get, uh, they could be a good unit, um, it would have been better if they were heel, though. I think it sucks to face. But, um, the match wasn't long. Um, I believe, uh, Big E got, because Big E and Kofi wrestled the match. Uh, Big E got Stardust up for the big ending, and Kofi Kinston, um, jumped on, um, did, like, the boom drop off the top and onto, uh, Stardust while he was on Big E's shoulders and got the win. And... The next team afterwards was uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro with Natalia. Um, I uh, actually think that Tyson Kidd and Cesaro could be a decent tag team, actually. It wouldn't be a bad tag team. And they actually had a good wrestling match. I liked it. And Kofi Kinston dived on everybody. And eventually Golden Star does come back out and attack Xavier Woods. So it distracts Kofi Kinston long enough for Tyson Kidd to get a roll up in on... Um, Nata on um, Kofi Kinston. So uh, they're out. So now it's uh, next is Jimmy and Jay, the Usos. And um, I thought this was good stuff. Um, Tyson Kidd hides behind Natalia and it, and it allows us all to come in and hit a German suplex on him and they at um, attack Jay Guso for a while. Um, why I said Jay Guso is as I was talking to the, my friend on the phone with this, and, uh, I was talking about how I, we, we can't tell what's Uso apart, and he's like, I know what Uso this is, it's Jay Guso. 
So uh, from now on, I'm just going to say Jake Uso. Um, if, since because it will be easier for me to review uh, an Uso match. Um, so then um, Jake Uso is getting the hot tag. He's hitting all the shit, and they dive on uh, Cesaro. Um, Tyson Kidd tries to like use Natalia. He grabs hold of Natalia while Jake Uso was trying to grab him, and Tyson Kidd kicks him in the head, and he goes for the springboard, and Jake Uso counters with a super kick, and then um, either Jimmy or Jay um, hits a splash on him, on uh, Tyson Kidd for, well, to advance to the next part, and this is like the finals now. Um, it's Adam Rose and the Bunny. They were the last guys, and I was swear I was going to uh, flip out if Adam Rose and the Bunny won. Um... There's more stuff with the bunny. It's getting bad. But um, the bunny's screwing everything up. Um, one part, spot I got scared that they were going to win was when uh, the bunny did a uh, sunset flip powerbomb off the turnbuckle. I was afraid that the bunny was going to win right there. But thank God he didn't. Um, and then Adam Rose got the tag. And Jake Uso hits the splash on Adam Rose because him and the Bunny are having miscommunication issues. So the Usos are new number one contenders to the Tag Team Championships. And Naomi's backstage and she was watching the match and I thought it was a little random that they were showing her. I mean, I know technically it's one of the Usos' wife, probably Jake Uso. Um, and I was like, why are they just showing it now? But then it made sense. The Miz and Damian Mizdell, the Tag Team Champions, come up. And... He's like, you were so impressive in your um, music video, and I voted you to be AJ Lee's tag team partner tonight. Um, and um, she want, and he, he wants her to like work with one of his guys from Hollywood, so he gives her a business card, and she takes it. And this is obviously used to set up a storyline. And then what happens is Damien Mizdow gives her an invisible card. I thought that was awesome. That was hilarious. I'm enjoying Damien Mizdow more and more. And then Eric Rowan got interviewed. And uh, he's still playing with the Rubik's Cube. Um, and uh, who was interviewing? Tom Phillips was asking him, uh, why are you going after the big show? You have an IQ of 143. You know how to make wine and something else. And then he just says, I don't like bullies. Um, so then Big Show comes out, um, and says, uh, that, uh, he is like a big bully, um, which I thought was awesome, and he pretty much says that, uh, it's all because of the fans that, uh, you know, the fans didn't respect him, um, that's why he turned against Team Cena, and he was a traitor now, and he's gonna be the biggest bully ever and kick everybody's ass. So then Eric Rowan and Big Show come out and have a match, the match really wasn't anything special. It was just to set up a future match in the future. It leads to a, a brawl on the outside. And they both men get... And Big Show throws Eric Rowan into the steel steps. And then Big Show hits Eric Rowan in the spine with the steel steps. And um, gets disqualified. So Eric Rowan wins. And the funny thing was was uh, when the steps came down, they hit Eric Rowan in the head. So then now he has this big bruise on his head. And it was awesome. It was just... You could totally see... It wasn't a bruise, but it was like a bump on his head. It was awesome shit. I thought that was awesome. It was hilarious. At first, I was wondering, why is he holding his head? I thought he was botching or something. But no, it was because he had a bump on his head. So, it was all natural. Uh, imagine how bad that killed too, having steel steps like that. come dr Being dropped on your head. So then, Vince McMahon um, is backstage. And he comes up to these two guys and he looks at them. And I was expecting them, to, and they were dressed up really goofy. And I was expecting him to say, you're fired. That would have been hilarious, but nope. And then I think Renee Young came up and asked if, like, you're going to bring the authority back to power. I don't know why she would ask this, because only John Cena can. He even said this. I think this was just to plug the fact that he's going to be on the podcast with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which I will check out after I'm done uploading this video. So I don't know why they would show this. It was probably that reason. So then we get Fandango with Rosa Mendez. Thank you, Rosa Mendez. You are just 
hot and awesome. I'm just gonna keep saying that because, uh, who, like, the best part about this character is Rosa Mendez. Okay. So then, she he had a match with Jack Swagger with Zeb Coulter, which never happened. Um, because Zeb Coulter got attacked by someone backstage, and Fandango won by forfeit. So then Rusev comes out, and Lana talks about how they were upset that they had to say the that they almost had to say the awful um, Pledge of Allegiance and um, said um, that everyone tried to take the title from Rusev when the Battle Royal on SmackDown and no one could stop Rusev. And Rusev says that anybody he has faced is gonna, is gonna get crushed and anyone that comes across him will get crushed. And then he says, like Zeb Coulter. So it was pretty obvious. I, I mean, it was pretty obvious anyways, but he admits that he attacked Zeb Coulter, which we knew from the beginning that that's what was going to happen. So then, um, trying to remember what happens next. Um, oh, the Russian flag comes down and they do the Russian nat um, not national anthem, um, Pledge of Allegiance. And then Jack Swagger comes out, and it breaks into a wall with Swagger and Rusev, and it was awesome stuff. I liked it. The referees have to break it up. Ah. And it was good stuff. I like uh, this feud. Um, I like that we reignited this feud. Um, hopefully, Zeb Coulter won't be taken out of action, and you know can't cut the promos, because I think that will kind of ruin the feud. But I like this feud. Um, I could... I can't wait to see what happens at TOC because obviously they're going to have a match for the U.S. title at TOC. Um, so then we got Damian Mizdell versus Fernando with El Torito and the Miz was on commentary for this match. Um, it was awesome to see Mizdell. He was pretty over. Um, he we, he beats him with the figure for a leg lock. He was doing all Miz's movesets and afterwards... Um, Jake Uso comes out and slaps the dog shit out of the Miz since he was hitting on, uh, his wife backstage. And it's gonna lead to a match between Jake and the Miz tomorrow, uh, night on main event. And I'm actually gonna watch the main event for once and give you a review of it because I actually want to see that match. And afterwards, this stunt double, Damien Miz, that was selling the, uh, injury view. And I can't wait to see that match at TOC mainly because of Damien Miz, though. Uh, then we got Bray Wyatt versus All Truth. Nothing match. Bray Wyatt wins with Sister Abigail. He did hit the DDT on the apron, which was cool. And afterwards, he starts throwing a bunch of chairs and ladders and tables in the ring. And then he talks about the story about Jacob. And I thought that was kind of weird because I was thinking about Glenn Jacobs. And that's Kane's real name, so I don't really get why he was kind of using Kane. Um. My friend wouldn't shut up, so I couldn't hear what he was saying. But then Dean Ambrose comes out, and it leads to a big brawl. And Dean Ambrose gets the better of it, and he's going to go off a ladder and drop an elbow on him through the announce table. But uh, Bray Wyatt moves out of the way, and then he goes off the announce table, and he continues to attack Bray Wyatt. And um, eventually referees break it up, and then Dean Ambrose... Destroys Boy Wyatt's walking chair. I thought that was awesome. And Boy Wyatt's upset by this. And he wants to go back to the win and fight him. But the referees won't let him. And I thought that was awesome. This um, sold me to see the TOC match. And I'm looking forward to it. Next match. Uh, the Bella Twins. Nikki and Bree. Um, went up against AJ Lee. And you could have voted for a tag who a tag team partner could be. Could have been Natalia, uh, Naomi, or Alicia Fox. <coughs> um, I was just thinking, since the Miz voted for Naomi for this match, then does that mean that um, so did Damian Mizdell? Um, and um, Naomi wins. I actually kind of figured she would. Um, and... It was kind of a nothing match. AJ Lee beats Mix 
Nikki Bella tap out to the Black Widow. And I don't know where this is going. I don't care. Kind of, um, they're good wrestlers. I just don't care about this feud. Um, and then Santa Claus is backstage. And it's Mick Foley trying to sell a bunch of merchandise. And he accidentally almost gives away that he is Mick Foley. Um, they do this every year and I'm fine with it. Mick Foley loves Santa Claus. So I'm fine with this. And then Paul Heyman backstage. And he cut an awesome promo talking about what would happen if, uh, you know, I guess they wanted to get his thoughts in case John Cena lost his title shot. Um, and he talks about um, Brock Lesnar first, talking about um, how he's not there every week, saying that uh, WrestleMania is just pretty much says that, well, if you have Brock Lesnar there, it's pretty much like WrestleMania all the time. It's not special. It's always special when Brock Lesnar shows up. And he talks about pretty much every day would be WrestleMania if Brock Lesnar showed up every week. And they talk about if John Cena loses, um, they could um, have Seth Rollins be the new number one contender. But um, that that wouldn't be good because Seth Rollins curve stomped Brock Lesnar's head into the um, mad at... Um, Night of Champions, and, um, yeah, they pretty much didn't go very well, um, and they don't really, and now they don't accept his apology since the authority was around, so now Brock, Seth Rollins has to be worried like everybody else, um, what else did he say, um, talked about Undertaker saying, uh, it can't be the Undertaker because, um, Undertaker, Brock Lesnar taught, because no one's seen Undertaker since, uh, Brock Lesnar taught the Undertaker at WrestleMania what it's like to lose, that it can really sting, and they said that it can't be Stin because uh, then um, that it would they would like then um, they wouldn't have to hype it up like it's a retirement match. It would be a retirement match because it would Brock Lesnar would destroy Stin. Um, and he says that it pretty much you can just throw the whole roster at him and he'll destroy every one of them like throwing them to the lions and like you know the. You know, like the that the stadium, and I thought that was awesome. It was a great promo, and I can't wait to see because obviously John Cena is winning that match. So I, Royal Rumble will get John Cena versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and I can't wait to see that. Um, next week's gonna be the Slammies, and it's possible that Brock Lesnar will be there, and I wouldn't complain if he was, because I think he'll be the superstar of the year. And if it's, I mean, I don't think he will be. Paul Heyman will accept the award, so it's pretty obvious Brock Lesnar won't be there. What was the next? The main event actually was next, and the main event actually went on at 10.25, so this was a long main event. Um, it was John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, and Ryback versus Seth Rollins, uh, Kane, and Luke Harper with J&J security. Um, something we don't see often is John Cena went after Seth Rollins when he wasn't even the Lego man and put him in the STFU. I thought that was awesome. You don't really see that often. And then Ryback got in. And something actually I want to kind of mention too is uh, why does John Cena wear two she shirts? He wears one when he's cutting promos and one when he's wrestling. Is there really any need for that? I mean, he just wrestles without a shirt anyways. So why does he need to wrestle with have two t-shirts? I don't get that. And another thing I don't understand is uh, John Cena didn't sell that he had gotten choke slammed, knocked out, and triple power bomb through a table, but yet Ryback came out and he sold getting hit with steel chairs. This guy is not human, but then again, he comes back from injury in like two months, you know. Um, he had a car accident and he was there that day, so John Cena's not human, it's pretty obvious. Um, but the match was good, um, Ryback was in the match, and this pissed me off, um, he was about to do, hit the suplex on Luke Harper, and they go to commercial when he's, like, up in the move, I mean, why, they really couldn't wait until after commercial, they did it again, though, uh, when they got back, but, it ruined the moment, though, for me. And it would have been awesome if he had actually had done it right then and there. Like, I don't know why they had to hold back. But they <clears throat> the 
the heels dominate Dolph Ziggler for a while, and uh, then John Cena gets the hot tag, and he's going to get ready to hit the AA on uh, Seth Rollins, but Luke Harper comes in, and he gets the AA, and Ryback and John Cena double suplex Kane, and then um, the referee's distracted by, I think, Kane. Uh, no, by Ryback, I think, and then J&J &J Security take a cheap shot at Cena, so then they dominate Cena for a while, and then Dolph Ziggler gets the hot tag, and eventually he's hitting all the moves, and everyone starts coming into the ring and stops fighting. Luke Harper hits a big boot and tries to pin Ziggler off that, but it doesn't work and goes for the power bomb. and Ziggler wins with a roll-up. It was a surprise finish. It was... Definitely better than just hitting your finisher. It was a nice surprise win, and then afterwards it just leads into a brawl. And it was no uh, nothings. Um, it was no music. It just led to a brawl. Everyone's brawling. Cena's fighting with Harper. Ziggler's fighting with Rollins, and Kane's fighting with Ryback. And then Big Show comes out and pretty much uh, out numbers everyone, takes out everyone, um, and then eventually um, the heroes are beating up. The faces, and then Eric Rowan comes out with steel steps, and he's still got this bump on his head, um, which I thought was uh, hilarious. And he hits everybody with the steel steps, um, I, but when he goes to get attacked, Big Show, Big Show acts like he's gonna um, double choke slam Rowan and Ryback, and then Ziggler super kicks Big Show, Ryback, Miko clotheslines him. Cena then hits the AA on Big Show, and Eric Rowan hits the, hits him. Um, big show off the head with the steel steps and then afterwards it's so Stone Cold Steve Austin waited for Vince McMahon in the podcast for his podcast and I thought that was awesome um overall I thought Raw was pretty enjoyable tonight um I'm not really anything bad the only thing uh just kind of like little nitpicky things like Bray Wyatt versus our truth I didn't like the Divas match but hey it wasn't anything special. And now we found out on SmackDown this Friday. We're going to get Dean Ambrose versus Rusev. And I think and I'm going to tune into SmackDown too. So they're going to get a crap load of wrestling videos this week. So hope you guys enjoy them. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in to all this week. And uh, subscribe to all the stuff down below. I'm not really going to go into detail. Because uh, I'm pretty much tired of talking. Um, and I guess you can leave your comments about what you thought of the show as well. I thought the show was very enjoyable. Uh. Anything, I think everything but certain things like that I complained about was good. Um, I think the reason I think it's so good too is because I talked on the phone with my friend and it makes it more interactive than just sitting there and watching it alone. So that act definitely helps. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll be back to do the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast video very soon.